What's up? This your boy Kurt Siegel here, and uh, let's get into it. Album versus album. I think we're on volume 14, and the two monumental records that started to make people take rap very seriously, and that's Run DMC, Raising Hell, versus the Beastie Boys, License to Ill. Both records was on tour together. They were so monumentally important for hip hop. And what I mean by monumentally important, meaning that rap was at a point where it was at a standstill. The money wasn't really great. The shows, they, they just looked at it as a pop fad. That something was probably going to phase out. Until they were able to crash into the upper markets that they wanted to get into and get into suburban homes across the world and now you're on stage at Madison Square Garden you're taking rap to plateaus it had never been allowed to be instead of on a platform of just some regular shows regular venues now you're doing Madison Square Garden. <laughs> like, hey, you're being booked seriously with other acts. Now, a lot of people just say, man, run DMC. That's easy. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> I mean, if you listen to the Beastie Boys license, the ill, I mean, at this time, this was, Def Jam was rap rock. You know, that was it. Rap rock was the just the key that was run DMC's thing they were the kings of rock not the kings of rap the kings of rock and everybody remembers like Beastie Boys songs Paul Revere No Sleep to Brooklyn before Eminem white people used to rap <laughs> but Here's the problem. I mean, here's the thing. People think like when Vanilla Ice came along, they was like, "Oh man, Vanilla Ice can't start that white boy rap." No, you had the Beastie Boys was there, and people didn't say, hey, "Man, what the white boys doing rapping?" They said, "Oh, they don't." <laughs> Nobody cared. Everybody I knew in the hood. Had license to heal. No sleep to Brooklyn. Brass Monkey. I mean, come on. You can play these songs today. That's how dope the album was. Girls, do 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 do. People play that at parties. Then fight for your right to party just took them to a whole new platform. Because every teenage white kid used to bump that and tear up a door. That was their thing. Fight for your right to party. Time to get ill. They had so many songs on, these, uh, on this album that could contend right now with songs. That's how dope Vices to Ill was. Instant Def Jam classic. And this is like super hard because Run DMC was virtually out before the Beastie Boys. So this was like Run DMC's like third album. So when Raising Hell comes out only thing that was different was now they actually have Errol Smith on the record with Walk This Way. Tricky came out and it was a little bit more pizzazz on the albums, a little bit more structure than how Run DMC other songs were. They were so cliche. But this one was done in a different format. Like, for instance, 
You talk too much and you never shut up. You know, like, you talk too much. They had, uh, they had another song that was similar to that, but it was more like formula, like disco pop rock song that was just you blind you know songs like that it was just you know just like basic hood some cool stuff from around the way but it wasn't going to transcend to anything globally once they made race in hell all these songs could be played globally they were recognizable by every genre Tricky gets played in every movie known to man. People be like, man, I heard that song before. You heard it before because it was played a million times. It's Tricky to rock and rock and rock and rock. That's right on time with Tricky. So Tricky, Tricky, Tricky. <laughs> so you had heard the song a million and one times. You just didn't know. Like, where did I hear this song? Where did it come from? I know I know this song. What is it? Oh, it's tricky. Okay. I get it now. <laughs> Other than that, you didn't get it now. <laughs> but you got it now. But then you had songs like Dumb Girl. Man, it was, the album was amazing. I mean, Raising Hell was probably one of the greatest hip hop records ever made. Son of Byford, brother of Al. Betty's my mama and runs my pal. It's Mac that. I mean, D just ran down his whole family tree in a nice little short rhyme. And then hit it run, which was like, it was the funniest thing because run beatboxing was, was like, is this serious? Is, is he really beatboxing right now? Like, what's going on with run? I'm like, I didn't know run beatbox. It's like, what is this? Hit it run, rock. Hit it run was the first single off the album. And I never forget it. They was on Saturday Night Live and they did Hit It Run. Hit It Run! And I was like, what is this? Run beatboxing? <laughs> Run was serious with it. So, Run DMC was just better performers of the songs on stage, too. But that's neither here nor there when it comes to the record. You know, I look at the overall production of the records, and uh, I'm going to go with Raising Hell, just for the overall production of the record. The Beastie Boys is raw, and anybody who got to see that tour, you had one of the greatest shows in hip-hop history to be able to catch that tour. Now we know the majority of you guys don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> but for the ones that do or you just don't know instead of coming in and hating on it like you did the LL Cool J one and I'm like wow. No one knows I'm to listen to an LL Cool J album. I'm like what? I, I've never read so many crazy comments in my life that LL Cool J wasn't comparable to Tupac Shakur. And as far as the records, and they, he's rapping about cereal. I said, what in the world am I reading? Both albums are so comparable that you don't even know them. It's just that you guys are more gravitated to Tupac because you feel like it's more dramatized than LL Cool J songs. 
But LL Cool J songs definitely had meaning. And he could make any song he wanted. Just like Tupac. He could make any song. But to say the albums aren't comparable. LL album came out in 1990. It was playing into 92. Dear Mama came out in, that was what, 95? Me Against the World? And already that album is too old to be compared. I just don't get people sometimes. But that's because you're dealing with a younger audience who just doesn't understand. That's how I chalk it up. But anyway, it's your boy Carcino. I'm out. Follow the playlist, album versus album. Follow all the playlists. Matter of fact, I'm out.